They're lying about their nuclear capabilities. They have another nuclear site. My goodness, are, are, are we that stupid? Are we that stupid? Oh, no, our uh, nuclear uh, energy and uh, uranium enrichment is for uh, you know, peaceful purposes. What? <laughs> and you want to wipe Israel off the map? Fulfilling yet more Bible prophecy? Are you going to do that with peaceful purposes? I don't think so. So, I mean, this, is, this should come as no surprise. But the article goes on to say, Iran's last known missile tests were in May when it fired its longest range solid fuel missile, Sajil-2. Tehran said the two-stage surface-to-surface -surface missile has a range of about 1,200 miles or 1,900 kilometers, listen to this, capable of striking Israel, U.S., have a nice afternoon, and Mideast bases and southeastern Europe. So when I turn to Ezekiel 38 and I read how that there will be this Russian and Iranian led nuclear attack against Israel once she's back in the land, which by the way fulfilled Ezekiel 36 and 37. And now what comes after 37? I know this is profound. 38, thank you. What you well taught group. <laughs> what you learn in church today? 38 comes after 37. Wow, that's deep. But 30, Ezekiel 38 comes after Ezekiel 37. 37 is a prophecy about Israel returning to the land, and 38 and 39 are about Israel being attacked with a nuclear attack led by Russia and Iran and an alliance of nations once they are back in the land. And so now we read that there is now the capability, and many experts believe, and the intelligence is that Iran is with Russia, who has a mutual defense treaty, very chummy, Putin and Ahmadinejad, and they now have the capability, and it's just a matter of time, so much so that Israel has been entertaining a preemptive strike against Iran to wipe out their nuclear sites. Can Israel do that? Well, I know what my Bible says, and what my Bible tells me is that God is going to intervene, and this alliance of nations that attacks Israel will not succeed they will be destroyed. Why? Because the U.S. came to their aid? No. The U.S. has all but turned her back on Israel, and I think we'll suffer the consequences of that based on Genesis 12, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. But interesting to me that God will come to Israel's defense, and he will defend her this tiny little sliver of real estate on planet Earth against all of these enormous nations with all of their armies that we have described in Ezekiel chapter 38 and even in chapter 39. Well, for those of you who stay apprised of all of these things, and I know many of you do, you've doubtless seen the news coverage of the UN General Assembly last week. Let me tell you, this has been a very busy week. In fact, I have so much for the prophecy update, and I'm looking at that clock and realizing I probably should have forwarded more over to next Sunday, Lord willing, that I had to uh, kind of take out some of it so we could get into our study in the book of Acts. But so much has happened just in the last week and even in the last 48 hours. There's almost this unstoppable momentum now as you watch what is taking place. Well, last week, of course, uh, here in the U.S., we hosted the annual UN General Assembly. And for those of you who watched it or were able to watch it, uh, you probably watched in dismay and horror as Muammar Gaddafi, uh, <laughs> president of Libya, um, uh, left his tent and <laughs> entered the UN Assembly and delivered a one hour and a half uh, speech that was all over the place. It was weird. It was just weird. Um, after that, uh, we had none other than uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who uh, denies that the Holocaust ever happened. Uh, this is ah Ahmadinejad, who has stated vehemently that he can't sleep at night until he wipes Israel off the map. Uh, this is Ahmadinejad, who believes he is the one who is called to usher in the hidden Mahdi or Imam, depending on 
which sect of Islam you are from, uh, to uh, who is their Messiah, who will come and rule and reign uh, for seven years. And he believes that he is the one who is uh, commissioned. And just recently, in, uh, on the heels of his very controversial uh, rigged and, you know, uh, so-called election, uh, re-election, I should say, uh, which was <laughs> really, uh, it was it was laughable, incredulous at best. But uh, he knows that he's losing uh, support from his own people. So he had uh, recently passed the baton to Khamenei, who has sort of taken the helm now of this cause in believing that now they are the ones who are called to usher in the hidden uh, Mahdi. Well, after Ahmadinejad, uh, who did this last year, uh, stood up uh, and just, uh, you know, spewed satanic anti-Semitism. And that's what it is, by the way. Anti-Semitism is satanic. And I won't get into the reasons we've discussed this before. But uh, in fact, to me, the fact that Israel has been the most persecuted people as God's chosen people on the planet since the beginning of time validates that they are indeed God's chosen people. And if it validates that they are indeed God's chosen people, then that must validate that there is indeed a God. And He is the God of Israel. Okay? So I, I'm not going to get started on that. But here's the point. He spews out his anti-Semitic Hitler hatred for Israel. And then, after Ahmadinejad did this, it was time for Benjamin Netanyahu, the newly re-elected Prime Minister of Israel, to get up and speak. I was only able, I think you can get the entirety of it on YouTube now, but I was only able to listen to about 20, uh, 25 minutes of it. And I'll tell you, it was interesting to me because it seemed like there was an anointing of God on his speech when he spoke. And you have to understand something about Benjamin Netanyahu. He is well versed in the Hebrew scriptures. He is, he is an articulate man. He is a blessed man. You know, one, uh, in fact, I think the year was 2000. He was the guest speaker at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale in Florida, Bob Coy's church. And I actually have a videotape of that it was before DVDs <laughs> back in the year 2000, almost nine years ago. My goodness, I can't believe it's been nine years already. But he got up and he quoted Old Testament scripture. And he was the recipient of a prophetic word that he wasn't prime minister at the time. I think uh, it was either Ahud Barak or Ariel Sharon who had succeeded him. But he was given a, a word of prophecy that he would at some point in the not too distant future be reelected as the prime minister of Israel. And that was a word from the Lord. And he has now been reelected as the prime minister of Israel much to our delight, because Netanyahu won't play games. He will not play games with a U.S. administration that just offers lip service. And he delivered what I believe was the most blunt and direct and eloquent and perfect of speeches ever made before this body at the U.N. General Assembly. Joel Rosenberg had this to say, over the years, I've heard Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu deliver a lot of speeches, but none so powerful as this. It reminded me of President Bush's speech to the UN in September 2002, when he challenged the world community to effectively hold Saddam Hussein accountable for dozens of violations of international law or risk irrelevance. Today, Netanyahu challenged the world to stop Iran from acquiring weapons of genocide or risk losing all moral legitimacy. President Bush's speech led to a war with Iraq. I suspect Prime Minister Netanyahu knows full well a war is likely coming with Iran. That's Ezekiel 38. That's Ezekiel 38. Here's an excerpt from his speech, which you can get the, the manuscript or the transcript of it uh, online. This is what he said yesterday. A man, speaking of Ahmadinejad, doesn't call him by name. The man, which is, uh, <laughs> there's a reason for that. Yesterday, the man who calls the Holocaust a lie spoke from this podium. 
To those who refused to come here and to those who left this room in protest, I commend you. 